Hey everyone, Randy here from Eternal Stellar Games, and today we're going over how to install Perforce, which if you don't know what Perforce is, it is a source control, uh, mainly designed for game development, and in my opinion, it is the best source control for game development that is free. Uh, so how it works different from GitHub is GitHub, you actually just store it on GitHub, um, and then you have to just pull from it all the time. Whereas with Perforce, you actually set up a server and then you can remote into the server from any device and pull it down and make changes to it. And it's, it's actually truly like using a source control versus GitHub is more of like a backup. So if you're gonna look up a Helix Core server or P4D, just look up Perforce and go to downloads, look up server, you'll see this and you come to this page. So go ahead. Select the uh, device you're on. It's going to go here. We're on Windows. Go ahead and download. And it will ask you to fill in some information for uh, like, for you to actually download it. Um, so you just put in all your information and then hit download. And I'll see you in a second. All right. So now once you have that downloaded, um, we're going to want to actually stay on this and go ahead and download not the command line client but the p4v which is the visual client um, and that is going to be very helpful for us helix visual client there we go so you're going to go down here select family again platform version you're going to choose exe download it's going to download like normal now when you download the server i want you to know too you don't actually need to put in your real information. Uh, they don't really check it. Um, it's just to make sure you're actually kind of a real person. Um, but install both of these. Or uh, download them at least. Alright, so now you're going to open up the Helix Core server that you downloaded. Uh, and it's going to pop up the installation window. So you're going to see Helix Server P4D and Helix Command Line P4. Now there are some other features such as Helix Proxy and Helix Broker. Um, I'm not going to go into those in today's video. Uh, for the purposes of source control, you don't need them. However, they are some cool features you could look into. So go ahead, select the directory you want to. Go ahead, click next. Uh, we're going to keep it as this port number, port 1666. All right. Uh, and this, the P4 root, this is setting where we want to actually create the server file. So, go ahead, go back to it, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and set it just on desktop for now, just because we'll create a new, just call it server, and then I'll select it, and so it's just going to be stored there. We're going to hit next. So you're going to want to leave it uh, server 1666, uh, put your username there, and keep going. And then you're just gonna finish the installation. Yes, you could change my computer. Now, if you're wondering why I'm running this on a VM, I'm not afraid of the software. I already have it installed though, already on my computer. So I wanted a fresh install so I could walk you through the process. So now we've got it installed, I believe. Yes, we do. Just hit exit and we're good to go. So now we can do the p4 installation which is the visual client but we also install we're about to install a command line tool as well uh, and all these you're going to want to install again the server is 1666 that's the username keep going install yes it's going to want to install some more apps give it a minute Okay, so now it's completely downloaded. Uh, just keep start P4V. We're going to go ahead and exit. And now it's going to close the installer and it's going to open up the P4 Visual Client. And so this is what it looks like. The actual, well, this is what connecting to your server looks like. Now your server is already running and we can actually check that if we go ahead and open up our task manager. Um, and we go to details, or let's see, processes, versioning engine. So that versioning engine right there, 
um, runtime broker. You can see some of the pieces. If it was just the visual client, you would just see this, but all these other pieces are the actual server running itself. So we can search server, or we can search P4D, P4D, there we go. And that's the server right there. So go ahead, we can hit okay, no such user. So what we might need to do then is hit new, uh, username, Randy, full name, Randy, password. I'm not putting in a password. I'm not putting in, oh, uh, I got to put an email. Uh, it doesn't matter what the email is. The, the emails, all, all this information is stored locally. None of this, none of this that you're putting in right now actually goes to Perforce. So just go ahead, save, there we go, and hit OK. And boom. Would you like to actually check? No. Uh, no. <laughs> so now this is the official Perforce visual client. Um, so you're, you're officially logging into the server. Um, and this is the typical normal side that you're going to see here. But let's say you want to do some more administrative things. You look up P4 admin. Go ahead and open that. You're going to again say the server, the user, hit OK. And this uh, do you, yes uh, this is gonna this is asking if you want yourself who you're logging in to become the super user which means you have all admin privileges and yes you do since you're the first user now later in you can go and change this but you change it in the admin so the p4v or the visual client is for just adding things uh, removing them or uh, changing your workspace or merging stuff where the actual admin piece is for managing the depots, which the depots are the repositories. That's what Perforce calls them as depots. Uh, so you can go here and you can actually create new depots if you want to. Um, and then this is your home. You can create new users, change the security level, change all the different server information, um, check all the different users, their permissions, topology. It's actually pretty pretty good software okay so i actually went ahead and closed the admin you might need to reclose it and open it again certain things weren't use uh working so now perforce is technically free however like they say here it's an unlicensed server and it's limited to amount of users and workspaces uh, and workspaces is just where the server is stored on your device when you're editing files. So what you do exactly is you you get your depot and you get the latest and it'll store on a workspace. So let's go ahead, we can go ahead and create a workspace. Uh, no workspace selected, new workspace, uh, workspace name. I'm just gonna say Randy VM. Uh, no, we're not gonna have a stream. And this is the depot you want to select. And right now we have nothing in the depot. However, if we did, we could select certain files that we want to store or if we want to store the entire depot. Um, and this will automatically get revisions. You can check that or not. Uh, in advance, that's just changing some of the settings you can read here. Um, so you just leave all these the way they are. They're usually pretty good. Uh, and just go ahead and create that add files to server this is a good thing here we let's just uh, create a folder and we'll call it test folder all right rename all right everybody so what i went ahead and did is i went on my local device and i just created a new folder called new folder and put just a, a text document in it um you don't actually have to add something to it right now but you can i'm going to for now uh, and this is use a streams depot or use a classic depot and you're probably gonna wanna use a classic depot. That's the one I've the mess with the most. Um, if you read in the documentation, there is some good Perforce documentation out there. You might wanna use Streams Depot, but for our purposes for game development, classic depot is probably the best route to go right now. Go ahead, start, it added it, finished it, and refresh it. All right, so now if we check depot on the P4V client, we could see what it actually looks like here. Uh, and we can see test document 
and it says nobody's checked it out. This is version one of one. And if we go to a workspace, we also see it. But the difference is here is just like normal source control, if we edit this document here, it doesn't actually edit it on the depot. You have to actually check it out, add it back in to this pending. You'll, we'll, I'll show you that later. And then submit it to the server and then it'll change it. Now, if we go here, we can go to this depot, we can go to refresh depot, and now we can see it on here. And if we really want to on this, uh, we can actually obliterate this file from the depot uh, and do anything we want. We can obliterate this. Uh, you can create new depots, view the depot itself. Um, you can edit it, print out that information. You can do lots and lots of stuff. So that's where I'm going to end it for now. Uh, but I'm going to make another video too, going over more in depth of how to actually really use this, of really showing you how to actually check out things and put them back in and mess with them and maybe add some users. So let me know specifically what you want to see uh, and how you want to use it. And uh, go ahead, like, subscribe, check out the Discord, join it, keep up to date. And uh, take care, everyone. We'll see you in the next video.